Y'all already know what it is, man. It's your boy, Mr. Williams. I talk gray. Well, we talk about the gray areas of business because it's never just black and white. I got a heavy hitter in the building. My man, Cyrus. What's going on, man? Yo, what's up, man? Super happy to be here. Yes, yes. Finally to get you up in the building. You know what I'm saying? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> you know what? Let me do it correctly. You know okay, what I'm saying? Okay, okay. My man, Cyrus Harbin. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. He has a tech career and business influencer and the founder of the Tech is the New Black Podcast. Hold on. We got to clap it up for that. You know what I mean? Yes, Man. yes. Yes, yes. So how you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Doing good. Uh, just, uh, yeah, uh, this week we're actually doing a soft launch of uh, Octoply AI, uh, okay, which okay. is, uh, of course, everybody knows right now AI is going crazy. Uh, yes. 2023 is definitely going to go down as the year of the AI boom. If you ain't using it in your business or in your life, then you then you you kind of you kind of tripping a little bit. No, 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 you are right, man. Chat GPT, it, it be coming in handy. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's it's pretty fire. We use it a, we use it a lot. Even for all my employees, I've used it to even just like build out their schedules. So I didn't create any schedule of anybody that works for me. AI created their their full wow. schedules. For real? Yeah, yeah it's incredible. I just I just told it. I said, hey, I hired this person. I literally hired somebody, and I said, hey. I hired this person. Their duties are this, 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 and this. Uh -huh. Please create an 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. schedule for this person. Include tasks that I didn't think of that they need to do. Yeah. You know, and, and it literally immediately, like, made a schedule. And, like, it created tasks that I was like, oh, my God, they should do that. I do need them to do that. So it, it basically just did everything I needed it to do. And I copied it, put it on a spreadsheet, and gave it to them. And that's the schedule they've been following. That's crazy. But do okay, so do you think the fact that you have like AI can do that? Do you think that could take away from a person's natural like level of creativity, their their thought process, like make them lazy? Uh yeah, it could. But the way that I look at it is so think about it. So as a so as business owners, entrepreneurs, the the job is to as you grow and you scale, mm -hmm. is to hire someone and delegate a task or a department for them to handle. And okay. that's not to make us lazy. That's so we can focus on the bigger picture. Uh -huh. And okay. AI is real. Realistically, it's the same way. Realistically, AI is nothing more than an assistant. So it's an AI assistant. And so okay. AI isn't meant to be the business owner. It's just meant to assist you in things. Okay. But AI well, itself can can't, it. can't lead a team. Now it can do a job of one person maybe. Yeah. But it can't manage that department, manage that team. It can't build a business. It can it can help you get ideas, but it can't do everything for you. So really, it's it's a valuable tool. It's like having an employee. Having an employee doesn't make you. It shouldn't make you lazy. Yeah. <laughs> but it should instead free up your time, so yeah. now you can focus on other more important aspects of the business that'll move the needle forward. Okay. No, I could dig it. I could dig it. In terms of a business aspect, you know what I'm saying? I, I could definitely yeah. see how it could help yeah. with the business. Forward. It's definitely going to replace a, a lot of jobs. It's already yeah, replacing jobs. Yeah, because I'm seeing, like, you know, my daughter be getting on my nerves, and she got, like, an AI person that she talked to. Is my dad supposed to? And I'm like, the hell is this? Like a Megan type of thing. Yeah. I'm like, That's yo, this crazy. is getting too crazy. Yeah, it is. It's it's really wild. We're in some uh wild era. Even um the the founder of not the founder, the CEO of mm -hmm. OpenAI. OpenAI is the company that owns ChatGBT. Okay. I'm um, just to be clear, and technically Microsoft kind of owns OpenAI because they're their largest investor right now. Uh -huh. I think they own about seventy percent of it. But okay. anyway, even the the CEO of OpenAI recently said that he he can't sleep at night because all he's thinking about is is basically like they just open Pandora's box. And he's yeah. like, he's like, what's about to happen? Because some Terminator type stuff about to go on, man. Yeah, because what people don't realize when it comes to ChatGBT, like a lot of people use ChatGBT, mm -hmm. but the reason why the company's called OpenAI mm -hmm. is because that means it's an open source. Now, what does that mean? That means if you're a developer, you can actually take their technology and you can create your own AI that can do things that even ChatGBT can't do. What? So that's so it's why thinking like for itself. Oh, oh no no no! I'm sorry. You said the person can take it and do. Yeah. So if you're a developer, so for example, like with, with Octoply AI, uh huh. We we have developers and um, we ha we have our own proprietary software. Okay. But the the artificial intelligence that we're using, we've taken the artificial intelligence from ChatGBT 
And we've integrated that into our software to do things that ChatGBT doesn't already do. Like we've been able to kind of bend it and tweak it to do some stuff that you want. If you go to ChatGBT and ask ChatGBT to do it, won't be able uh -huh. to do it. But again, the reason why we're able to do that is because they built ChatGBT. So we literally think, think of it this way. This is the, the best way to put it. It's almost in a way if someone gave you a car or the, you, you, you get a car and you get it stock, mm -hmm. you can you can take the engine out and you can put a different engine or you can tweak the engine. Okay, you can, yeah. You can change the tires. You can you, you can change the color of the car. You can wrap it, change the interior. You can put NOS in the car to make the car go significantly faster yeah. and do things it wasn't able to do, but you still needed that framework of the car. No, That's right. essentially what ChatGBT is. It's something to where a variety, any developer anywhere can take it, they can tweak it, flip it, have it do some stuff. But again, that's why it's scary. Because that means yeah. anybody can get their hands on it yeah. with bad intentions and, no, and, and do some 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 dangerous things. To be on some Iron Man type ish going on here, man. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's about to get real interesting. Well, before we go ahead, right? Um, I know you got your own podcast. Tech is the new black podcast, right? Yes, yes. How long you been in the podcast game? So I've been in the game now, not very long. Uh, we started we started Tech is New Black in late September of 2022. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So right. it, it just it just grew really fast. Yeah, so it's, it's been thing, man. it's been really incredible. So, uh, yeah. So initially, I got into the tech industry, and um, I don't I don't have a college degree. Uh -huh. I didn't go to college, nothing like that. I I did like I did a tech boot camp, and I was able to break into the industry pretty fast. Okay. Uh, boot camp was just a few thousand dollars. I got into the industry, and at first. It took me a few months before I started talking about it online because I was kind of like yeah. blown away. I was like, yo, this industry is crazy. And then eventually I started talking about it online and I was telling people because I went from Lyft driving. So I got my first job and I was making 90000 And I was telling people like, hey, oh. y'all, I make. <laughs> you don't jump on this, this. Hold on one second. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut you. So you said you was a Lyft driver making 90000 No, 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 no. I was a Lyft driver. I did the boot camp. And then when I got my first job in tech, it was a ninety thousand dollar oh, job. Oh, okay, okay. That's yeah, yeah. a major shift yeah, from yeah. driving Lyft to making ninety bands. Yeah, yeah, ninety bands, Damn. and and that's small money in this industry. Like, so it was yeah. ninety bands, and I started talking about it online. Uh huh. And and then I was, I'm, I'm very transparent. So I was talking online, and I was telling people, I said, hey, I'm about to leave this company and go to another company to make more money. So mm -hmm. I was at that company. It was a great company, but I was at that company for about six months. And then another company came along, and they offered me one hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars. Wow! So okay. in in six months, I went from forty-five thousand dollars live live driving to six months later, mm -hmm. uh, well, technically eight months later, but eight months later, making one hundred and fifty-seven thousand dollars. And then I was wow. at that company for only two months. Another company came and and they hired me on for two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. And then around that time is when I started the podcast because at that point okay. I was a lot of money, I was making good money working remote mm -hmm. and from talking about tech online I was getting certain brand deals and yeah, affiliate yeah. deals and I was like okay I have more money than what I need I was like let me take this money start a podcast so yeah. I can interview other people in the tech industry that are uh -huh. making millions and they can give everybody the game and we can just kind of talk about different ways to get into the industry and make a lot of money really fast. That was a dope avenue to get into, man. Because I'm not even going to lie to you. If you're going to be down here July 30th to the 31st, mm -hmm. man, your boy done partnered up with the Social Proof Podcast. Oh! And yeah, yeah, man. Shouts out to Social Proof. Yeah, man. Shouts and out David Shins. It's going to be one of the biggest podcast summits out here. Anything you want to learn about the podcast game, you know what I mean? Yeah. You need to be out there because you could definitely give some sauce about the podcast game. Anybody that wants to actually get in it. Yeah. And right now, if you use the code 15 Williams, you can get 15% off when you use that code. So you just got to go to the www.podcastsummit.com. Yeah, y'all do not miss out on that, y'all. I'm yeah. definitely going to be there. That's Because yeah, I actually, I, I never told people this online. I took David Shen's podcast course really way before I started the podcast. So I took it too. I, I, I took his course. And, uh, yeah, and, like, three, four months later, I ended up uh, starting Tech is a New Black. So, that okay. I, think, I think that's the... Yeah, that's the only podcast course I ever paid for and did. Every other thing was just kind of free information I, I was finding online. But, yeah, I, I took his course. Yeah, no, no, no. It's very insightful. Yeah. It could get you on your way. But before we... We don't just jump right in, just head first. Where you from, man? 
Bro, I'm from Gary, Indiana. R- Gary, Indiana? Yeah, yeah, Gary, right? Indiana. Yeah. Well, I thought you were about to say the A or something like that. Well, so I lived in Atlanta most of my life. So I'm, I'm a Georgia boy. I lived okay. in Atlanta most of my life. But I was I was born in Gary, lived in Gary for some years as well. Uh-huh. But um, I still so I'm a dual resident, so I still have my condo in Atlanta, and mm-hmm. of course I just moved out to Brickell, Miami. So okay. I go back and forth. Like I'll be back in Atlanta two days from now. Okay, okay, okay. So you said you're from Indiana. Yeah. All right. So now I thought I saw something where you said you was homeless. Oh yeah, I've been homeless a couple times in my life. Okay, uh, so yeah. How does something like that happen? What happened? Did you go to college? What did you do when you got out of high school? Uh, so after high school, I actually went straight into the Marine Corps. So I served in the Marine Corps for six years. Okay. And I went because I, I didn't really have a, a plan. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't living with my parents. Like, I, I moved out on my own around, like, the 10th grade. Really? So, yeah, yeah. So I was out on my own. Oh, and, uh, you, he, yo, he, he just says, <laughs> what make you move out on your own in the 10th grade? Man, it was a combination of a couple things. Like one, my family just didn't have a lot, like a lot of money. And okay. Just transparently, they were kind of like, "Hey, we're moving to Florida," and this is when I was in Georgia, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Man, I, I we we had just moved back to Georgia from Ohio." I was like, okay. "Yo, I've only been here for five months. We just came from a, from up north to here. Now we going." I say, "Yo, I'm." I say, "Can I please? Can we just settle?" And then they were like, "Well, you could stay." Uh, we're going to Florida, and your mom and your pops. Yeah, mom and st- yeah, step step pops. Yeah, okay, step pops. Step pop. okay, yeah, so right. they, they went out to Florida, and um, I first I, I stayed with some some neighbors for a few months, but around that time I was I wasn't like no I wasn't like no hood dude. It wasn't that that type of thing. You wasn't thugging, but I was still I was still <laughs> throwing a lot of hands. I was I was fighting a lot. I was getting okay, into a lot okay. of fights. And um, I ended up getting into something in the, uh, in the neighborhood. Some mm-hmm. some some dude, some stuff happened, and uh, I fought some dude. He was a grown dude, uh-huh. but we ended up getting getting the scrapping. He got he got beat up a bit, and then he went and got a lot of his boys that are all other grown men. Uh-huh. They showed up at the house I was staying at, which is now my my godparents. It was their crib, yeah. And they showed up with their guns and everything, and they was like, yo, and so my godparents turned to me and said, Cyrus, we love you. You got to get you out. You got to go. They was like, we got kids here, and you bring a drama here. Yeah. And so um, that kind of, like, woke me up. But after that, I ended up getting a roommate who was in the same neighborhood. Mm-hmm. He had an extra bedroom. So, okay. yeah, so my last couple years of high school, I was just working a job, going Where to school. Uh, it was It was just a, uh, it was a soul food joint. Uh, okay. gra- Granny Soul Food. Shouts Granny out to uh, soul Granny food. Soul Food okay. in, in uh, Austell, Georgia. So you was just thugging it, going yeah. to school, handling your thing, probably yeah. not even realizing how that kind of living was shaping you for where you at now. But before yeah. we get there, right, okay, so you said you got out of high school, you went to the Marines. Yeah. So why you ain't a popo or maybe <laughs> why not? Why not the feds? Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? No, so yeah, I went to the Marine Corps because realistically I was so unprepared for, I didn't do my SATs because like, I, I missed so much school. So I didn't even know when I was supposed to take my SATs because you know, I was living on my own okay. just with a roommate. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you're a young boy. Like, I'm, I'm surprised I even finished high school on time. That's good, you know, though. That's good. But I missed so much school that I was not prepared for college. Mm-hmm. I didn't fill out anything for college. Yeah. So I was in ROTC, a lot of tech recruiters. Not t- tech. God, that's such a habit, tech recruiters. A lot of uh, military recruiters were reaching out to me. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I ended up, I joined the Marine Corps because, I mean, I, you know, I wanted to show people, you know, I was kind of thuggish, ruggish. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to go to the hardest branch, which was not the smartest thing to do, but I did it. But, uh, okay. yeah, yeah, but not. Uh, yeah, being a cop after that, no, there's no way I could have could have no. did that. No, no way. But no it disciplined way. you though, the Marines. Hey, so for everyone who's watching this right now, you're interested in the career that myself or my guests have been talking about, then I suggest you check out Careerist Bootcamp. Not only is this the boot camp that I've done, but this is the boot camp that many friends of mine has done as well. They offer a variety of tech courses, things like sales engineering, manual QA, and QA automation, and others. These are virtual, most are four week courses that you can do from home. And they get you jobs that are paying on average about $125,000 a year. Now, we've partnered with Careers to where they are offering an exclusive discount to our community and our audience of $300 off of whatever their pricing is. That even includes, even if they have a sale going on, you can get $300 off on top of that sale. So make sure that you're using the link that we have in our description because that is a way that you're able to take advantage of that discount. And aside from that, let us know which course you chose. (sighs) 
Yeah, it, it it did a lot. It did a good bit. I, I ain't okay. gonna. I ain't, the, the Marine the Marine Corps crazy. People don't re, people do not realize. Oh my God, who's that dude? How David crazy Goggins? the Marine Corps is. Yeah, David Goggins. He, he was a, doing some crazy. I think fish. he was a SEAL though. He was a, okay. But, but Navy SEALs train with Marines. Uh, That's what people okay. don't realize. So like Marine Corps is is something different. <laughs> it's something okay, different. Okay. But it, I will say this: it it pushed me to my limits to where it at least showed me. Like, yo, we're much more durable as human beings than we think we are. Like, we're yeah. actually, we're incredibly durable mentally, facts, facts. physically, because they they broke they broke us so many times during Marine Corps boot they camp. They broke you over there, huh? Yeah, they did some, like, some wild stuff to us, and it really showed you for you to come back. Yeah. It's like, whoa, like, you could really come back from anything. You could really do anything. Okay. You know, if you really want to. So I, I, was, I would say it definitely did that for me. Okay, yeah. so so you're done with the Marines. Yeah. What you're doing now? I saw you was in some poetry. Like, what's yeah. up? You was- so there was a lot. So in between Marine Corps, uh, so in between Marine Corps, I eventually uh, I eventually became a poet, and I was a full-time poet for a while. Okay. And uh, I, I, was, I was doing my thing. Wasn't making a lot of money. I definitely looked like I was popping because, you know, everybody see you traveling here. You traveling. grand popping. You know, you getting flued out, all that stuff to perform at events. Uh, I yeah. actually opened up for um, I opened up for Migos, opened up for Dej Loaf. Um, I, I, was, I was at a lot of conferences, huge events. Okay. But it's like, you know, I was making like a, a $1,000 here, $1,000 there, selling some T-shirts. It's like it wasn't like real wasn't money or real emotion. Yeah, yeah, I was still living in the hood in Atlanta. I was the, the, the place I was standing. It just, it just, I just wasn't, I ain't have any motion going on. And then... Uh, eventually got certified as a relationship and life counselor. So uh, because of really? course, yeah, because that kind of correlated because a lot so of the Barry events. Barry Jackson type ish. Ah man, <laughs> I was I wouldn't say I was I was like Kevin Samuels. It wasn't. He was more that. like Kevin Samuels. Nah, I, I I would say I would actually I spent a lot of time calling both genders out, but for the sake of all okay. of us stepping it up, being okay. like, "Yo, men, okay. we need to step it up. Fact, Ladies, fact. y'all need to step it up." Yeah, you know. So I, I wasn't trying to do it this side versus that side, but That's that good. was even tough because you know whenever you call men out, men will say, "Oh, you you a simp, you Derek Jackson." Yeah, you and when you call level. women out, "Oh, you a Kevin," so it's like no one wants to be held accountable for nothing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. between that. Not being able to do speaking engagements because you know the pandemic hit, mm-hmm. so that kind of like that. That's when I realized, yo, I don't really have any money for real because okay. when the pandemic hit and I realized I was struggling to get speaking engagements, mm-hmm. and then one day I had to sit down, and I had to sit down. And I had to really look at like, okay, what am I fighting for? Like, wh- how much am I actually making as a man? And this is around the time I, I hit thirty, so I was, I, you know, I really started thinking like, yeah, what yeah, have yeah. I accomplished as a man? It's like, yo, no, and thanks. also, you know, women typically as they get older, they have more demands. So yeah, in my twenties, I could get away with with my charm. Yeah, and 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 Once being you hit thirty. Oh, they the don't care about gotta that. Gotta be right. They don't care how cute you. There's like, ah, yeah. miss me with the cute stuff. Miss me with the funny. I want to yeah. see the funds. Like, what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Type of thing. No, and so, thanks. but I appreciate that because it kind of woke me up to okay. really look and be like, yo, what am I doing as a man for real? Mm-hmm. And so I had to pull back and just, just straight up, I just researched. Hey, what are industries? What are industries that pay a lot, pay the most money? Okay, are gonna have longevity. And doesn't require me to go to college to get into those industries. So I literally Googled it. Mm-hmm. And every single blog I looked at, every site that I looked at, the number one type of jobs that kept coming up mm-hmm. were jobs in tech. Jobs in tech. So when you say tech, are you talking about like tech support? You was on some motherboard. That's funny. You know <laughs> no, that's a good question. Though. That's a good question. No, not tech support. Uh, a lot of people know tech support. They, they're not really making any money. So really, so, IT cats they ain't making no bread. No, no, they're not. Now you're not gonna meet any tech support people making oh. like 120k um, plus, and that that's no insult. That's actually insight, like for y'all to realize, like, okay. yo, because I'm, I'm all about helping people avoid like the 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 BS money or the BS jobs. It's yeah. like really like what where the real money is at, where the real mm-hmm. motion is at. And so um yeah, so the tech industry specifically the software industry because of course tech could be hardware, but the software mm-hmm. industry uh specifically what's called SaaS or software as a service. So think of Zoom. Zoom is software as a service because they're okay. a software that provides a service where you can do the Zoom meeting rooms or yes. if you need to use their their app to use a phone or place phone calls and record the calls. 
transcribe the calls. So they're a software as a service that you pay a monthly fee for. Okay. Now, us as individuals, if we want to sign up for Zoom, let's say we, we could probably get a $20 monthly Zoom account to have the Zoom meetings. Yeah. But a corporate, like a company, if they go to Zoom and say, hey, we have... 500 employees, we need a Zoom meeting room account where all of our employees can meet every single day. Mm -hmm. That package ain't $20. That package is more like $50,000, $100,000 a year. Okay. So So what field does that fall into under tech? Yeah, so that's tech. That's software as a service. Oh, oh, so that's what that is. Yeah, so that's so, so that's a company... Now, obviously, that's a tech company, but of course, all these companies are tech companies. You know, uh-huh. Apple, Netflix, Google, Microsoft. You know, we go down a list. There's a crap ton of tech companies. TikTok. All of these are tech companies, mm-hmm. but typically, they sell to businesses. But the packages they sell to businesses is the real money. That's why all these companies are billion dollar companies. Because okay. first off. They're not doing a little hundred dollar, two hundred dollar transaction. They're yeah. doing a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollar transaction, and uh-huh. it's not a one time transaction. It's a annual recurring. So every year they're like renewing. People are renewing those contracts, yeah. and all they're doing is gaining other contracts from other companies. So that's how these companies end up becoming like you know multi billion dollar companies because like their their deals are massively huge. It's it's B two B primarily. Okay, and so the oh, tech. Oh, so, sorry. Where are you taking this type of course at? Oh, so the, the boot camp. So, I, so there's a bunch of different tech boot camps. Uh, so let me pull it back. So uh-huh. when I look to get into the industry, uh-huh. uh, first off, I looked at a variety of different jobs in tech that don't require you to be technical because I'm okay. I'm not technical to this day. I don't know how to code, program. I'm not really. Uh, I'm not savvy with APIs or any of that stuff. Okay. So there are what a lot of people don't know. Forty-seven percent of jobs in tech, the six-figure jobs in tech, forty-seven percent of jobs in tech are considered non-technical roles. Wow! So they're roles that, like, you don't have to be techie to do the job, and you, you can be making. Be geek. No, you really don't. You really don't. And okay. so, yeah. So, uh, so I, I did a sales engineering job okay, or a sales, sales engineering, engineering role. There's a boot camp that I did mm-hmm. that offered. Um, they offer different courses, and one of the courses was the sales engineering course. Mm-hmm. So I did the boot camp. They trained me, you know, top to bottom, and also prepared me to interview for those roles. They even gave me an interview cheat sheet that covered, like, 99% of the questions I was asked in most of the interviews. Okay. And it basically fully prepared me for, for the job in tech. And then that's how I was able to get into the industry so quickly. And then after I got in the industry, I started – T- putting everybody on, helping everybody get um, in the okay. industry. And at how first, long does the, uh, sorry, how no, long good. does the course take though? Uh, the course is six weeks. Six weeks. Yeah, a six week course. Are you moving at your own pace? Like, no, no. How so, the, it? so there's different boot camps. So the one that I did wasn't self paced. It was a virtual classroom. Okay. Uh, we were using Zoom to meet up in a virtual classroom, mm-hmm. and uh, that was it. Was five days a week, two two and a half hours a day. And I would literally, it would end, it was for me, it was from 8 p.m. to 10.30. And I would get up, you know, eat something, and at 11 p.m., jump in my car to lift drive from 11 p.m. at night until about 6 or 7 a.m. in the morning. Okay. And then so I would do the course, and as soon as I was done every day, would start lift driving again. Uh, but, yeah, that's how long it is. But there are other courses that – so so what I do now with my pod, – aside from educate people in the tech industry, mm-hmm. I recommend people to certain tech boot camps to do for certain jobs. Okay. Uh, so my team and I, we direct – we give people direction as to how to get in the industry. We don't charge people anything. You know, I know sometimes people think, really? like, oh, you, you got, got no fee. No, not, no fee. No, not we, on the back end or the front end. No, no. The only thing I charge for is when people book me for one on ones. When somebody's like, "Oh, uh, you know, okay. can I pick your brain?" Yeah, here's a link in my bio. You, hold in you, you about to pay for this, you know. But okay. aside from that, we get free game on the podcast. I go live every single week, and every mm-hmm. time I go live, I bring on a person that just got a job in tech, so that way yeah. p- people could hear from somebody that just got in the industry and really hear like raw stories about like what the boot camp was like and yeah. what the industry is like so far. Okay. And so yeah, that so that's what I do. Um and yeah, but so there are some boot camps are self paced. Sorry, sir. So you said you're still in the sales uh, forgot what you call it. No. So so the role that I do is there's different names for it. A better uh, name for it is solutions consultant. Solutions consultant. Okay. Yeah, that's I a better name for it because another name for it is sales engineer, but it, it confuses people and makes people think, oh, you're doing sales. And that's why I don't like that name because I've never done sales since I've been in tech. There are tech sales jobs. Uh-huh. Those tech sales jobs, 
you could make half a million dollars a year doing tech sales. Like wow. I have, I have a home girl. She makes three hundred thousand uh, dollars. Her name is Kayla. I had her on my podcast. Young, young mm-hmm. black girl killing it. Um, I have another home girl named Astrid. By the time she was only in tech sales for two years, she was making two hundred twenty five thousand dollars, and um, and a variety of other people. I know people that are. Now this isn't this isn't the norm, yeah. But I know some people that are millionaires, clock in, clock out, just from their job in tech. Really, nine yeah. to fivers. Yeah, nine to mm-hmm. fivers making a million dollars. That's why the tech industry people don't realize it. Like how much money is in this industry? Wow. You could be a you could be an employee making half a million dollars a year. So can you have a record and still get in this type of field? Well, when you have a record, so one we would have to discuss. Okay, what is the record? And two, let's say it's what, like a felony. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but again, what what kind of felony are okay. we talking about? Okay. So if, if we're talking a felon where I don't know, maybe you sold some drugs some some years back or something, Mr. it's like Meaner. yeah, there are plenty of of uh, maybe it's it's considered drugs that will be like considered a felony or something. Okay. There are still tech companies that would hire you, but also it depends on the role that you're doing. Okay. If, if whenever people come to me and they're like, "Yo, I'm a felon," you know, I, I did something you crazy. Check the box. I'll tell them, "Okay, your best bet is either one a startup, which is you know, because a startup they're just looking for people that are talented that are hungry, mm-hmm. or two to do what's called a non-customer facing role, meaning like a more behind the scenes job in uh, tech, okay. and that is more of a cybersecurity or okay. you being a software a software engineer okay. because no no customer is going to see you and be able to look your name up see and find out oh you did this so those are yeah. behind the scenes jobs that usually tech companies will kind of be more chill and more lax about especially if you didn't if you don't have some extreme violent crime okay okay did you have any struggles while you were taking the course uh i mean i would say some imposter syndrome um definitely mm-hmm. some imposter syndrome but uh, the the the, the course the course is fairly simple. It's a lot of information, mm-hmm. but none of it is is super complex at all. Okay. So one of the things that, that people people believe you have to be really smart. What's interesting when I was Lyft driving before mm-hmm. I made the decision to get in tech. Yeah. I was Lyft driving in Atlanta, and I kept picking up uh, different people from the um, from the Indian community, mm-hmm. and I was picking them up from the airport because there were always different tech conferences and events going on in Atlanta, and I remember. This gentleman was in the car. We were talking, and uh, he had a very, you know, thick Indian accent. And I asked him a straight up question. I said, "Hey, yeah, hey, yo, bro, I gotta ask you a question." I said, "I ain't trying to be racist." Yeah. I said, well, let, "Let's let's call it what it is." I said, "Yo, a lot of Indian people, a lot of y'all are in tech." I was like, "Do y'all have like a natural proclivity? Like, is that like, are, do y'all brains just work that way?" Yeah. He bust out laughing. He was like, "Oh no!" He's like, "No." <laughs> he, he said, "We are terrible." He says, "We are terrible at it." And yeah. I was like, "Well, how but do they so- always in it?" And I was like, "How many? Are, how are y-? He's like, "Oh, we just go after it." He said, "Even though most of us are really bad at it." Yeah. He says, "He says, he says, your country." has so many of these jobs, and for some reason, y'all are not going after them. Yeah, He's yeah. like, so us in our country, we go after them. He's like, and because there are not enough people to fill these jobs that have any mm-hmm. level of, of of education or qualification, he's like, we're the ones that get them. Mm-hmm. And, and that's why if anybody well, looks, if anyone looks up, you could actually look up which, uh, you can look up which, a community or ethnic group here in America mm-hmm. is paid the most or makes the most money, it's the Indian community. They yeah. make more money nah, than the Chinese can. community, than the whites, all of that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. But all of them are either in tech or they're yeah. like medicine. That's yeah, no, it, yeah, tech yeah, yeah. and medicine. Why do you think we shy away from it, though, like that? Uh, because of Because of the lack of examples. Okay. And so, you know, seeing... I remember the first time... I saw what is his name? He's like the first black billionaire um, here in America. He's still alive today. I, um, man, I can't earn your leisure right now. Man, but I remember the first time I saw uh, the only time I ever saw him on stage. It was this weird. I felt my brain like yeah. trying to process this black man is a billionaire. Mm-hmm. Like my brain was like going crazy, and all he was doing was just sitting there and talking. Yeah. But it was, and so. I know that one of the things is, of course, representation. So because, one, we don't see a lot of people that might look, that, that are black and brown, that are in tech, we assume, oh, that's not for us. Or or the people that we do see, or the examples we see on TV or in media or news yeah. are like these like super nerdy 
type really fast. When I type on the computer, I type like this. <laughs> like really? that. You ain't got the speed with Qu- it. Quarter million dollar salary in tech going like this. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like yeah, but again, it's it's a it's a it's an assumption that yeah. that you that you have to be that way, which that's not true at all. Even if you are a coder or a programmer, uh-huh. I I have homeboys that are programmers and and they're top level though. They're yeah. like CTOs and stuff, making over half a million dollars a year, and they are. People say nigga on the podcast. Yeah, you can. Okay, they some real niggas. <laughs> they some real niggas, and they and they are they and they are making so much money, and they're yeah. killing it, and they yeah. know their job well. But you would meet them and not even think that they work in tech. But how were you able to stay focused with being in this new field that you've never been in though? Looking for a job in tech can be tricky, but what if there's a way to automate the entire process? That's where Octoply.ai comes in. See, this software does all the work it takes for you to get hired from researching companies to scheduling interviews, and all you have to do is just show up. Octoply.ai is the first application of its kind that will find jobs that your top applicant for, apply to roles, reformat your resume, and manages interviews all while you sleep. So if you're tired of the tedious job search, try Octoply.ai today and let technology work for you. The money. Now I'm just playing. (laughs) Now I'm just playing. No, no. Hey, we ain't mad at that. Now I would say uh, stay focused. So it's it's not really that. I mean, you you do need to be, I say this, Mm -hmm. the things you need to be, you need to be disciplined. Okay. You need to be hardworking and you need to be competent. Not a genius, Mm -hmm. not even smart. You just need to be competent. I know a lot of dumb people in tech where it's like, yeah, you are a dummy. But it's like... (laughs) You are a dummy. Yeah, but it's like, but they're still able to get the bag because they're hardworking, they're disciplined, and because, like, it's like by their third or fourth time reading something, they finally get it. Like, okay, okay, that's what it's saying type of thing. Because everybody learns differently, you know? You got some visuals. Yeah. Then you got people that read or hands-on. I'm more hands-on. I ain't going to lie. I I went to uh, ITT Tech back in the day. Yeah. You know, I was like, okay, I think I could get into uh, computer programming. And the teachers, they would only cater into the Jamaicans in there that knew everything. Oh, wow. I couldn't catch on to nothing. It was a lot of coding and all of that type yeah. stuff. And it was going way over the head. Yeah, I'm, I'm trash at coding. I'm it, Yeah, it's <sighs> a lot. I ain't on front, bro. It so, really is. Okay. All right. So after the course is done, right? Yeah. How long does it take to get a job where you get a nose. Uh. So that's really that's really up to you. Yeah, you get a lot of nose. Mm-hmm. I I received I received well over a hundred rejections. Wow. Yeah, because I was I was applying aggressively. So they don't help with job placements, the boot camp that you went to? So there are some that do. Okay. So there there's one boot camp. Um there's one boot camp that uh that I recommend to people that does offer job placement. Um, I guess I'll say their name. I, I usually shy away from saying boot camps names if they didn't pay me hey. for sponsorship or for promoting them. Cause that's how y'all gotta move. You gotta cut that check. Don't be giving no no free marketing to people. <laughs> facts, Nevertheless, facts. I'll say this. Uh, so yeah, any of the boot camps that I recommend to people, I do have discounts. So if anybody's ever like, oh, okay, I'm, I checked it out. I want a discount. Literally just just hit me up or link in my bio, whatever, and you'll see the discounts there for the boot camp. But there's one boot camp that is self-paced um, mm-hmm. and that they do assist with job placement, which is course careers. Course careers. And okay. now they don't guarantee job placement because it they have a limited group of companies. Mm-hmm. But but again, like the the specific the boot camps that I recommend and the courses, the roles are usually in high demand. So okay. you don't need a boot camp to give you job placement. Okay. Uh, but that being said, usually it is a grind when it comes to getting a job. It's a very simple process. And again, this is, this is what we help with with Tech is a New Black, and this is what I do, where okay. I give people just the breakdown as to how to get a job as quickly as possible. Okay. Because, of course, I got a job in two months. Most people get jobs anywhere between three to five months. But there are plenty of people that have taken my advice and information. And again, all free advice. But there are plenty of people that have gotten jobs before they even finish the boot camp. Mm. Uh, or like within the first month of completing the boot camp. But again, I personally applied to well over 300 companies. I was applying to about wow. 10, 10 to 20 companies a day. Mm-hmm. And I was applying to the companies. I ended up com- coming up with a whole kind of flow where I would, ap- yeah. I would apply to the company. After applying to the company, I would add the company. I would list them in a spreadsheet that I had. Mm-hmm. Then I would reach out to the recruiter on LinkedIn I had like a whole flow and a whole system okay, that a system it took going. me like, I'm going to be real, it took me like two to three hours a day 
for for that and including interviews and stuff for that two months it took me to get my first job okay but and that's part of the reason why my team and i we've created octoply ai it's in uh it's a ai assistant it's a staffing and career assistant so staffing it does and career assistant yeah staffing okay. and career ai so uh, octoply it applies to it applies to up to um 100 plus jobs a week for you uh, if you don't have a resume, the AI will create a resume for you. Really? If you have a resume, it'll update your resume. And when it looks at each, it chooses each company to apply to. It, it does all the applying, but it doesn't just apply. It'll look at the job posting, mm -hmm. look at the job posting, look at your resume, and it'll reword your resume to, to be more accurate to that job posting. So that way you'll rank higher as a candidate and get more calls for interviews. Wow. It does essentially it does everything for you to get a job aside from you interviewing. You have to interview, of course. So y'all created this. Is it, is it an app? So it's a, it's a website. It's a website. Eventually we're going to do a rollout oh, okay. for an app. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, but we created it. It's myself uh, it's, and it's uh, a small team. So it's it's a merger of two different softwares. Mm -hmm. um, so it's two guys that I know that they're, they own their own uh, tech companies. Yeah. And we were all talking about AI and talking about talking about what it is that I do where I help people get in tech. And we were brainstorming. We were like, man, what's something that we could do with AI that would help people? Because AI right now, everyone sees it taking jobs away. We were like, yeah, what could we do with AI that could get people jobs uh -huh. and help them perform better? Okay. And then that's when we we talked and we came up with Octoply AI, where we're like, yo, a, a AI, again, it's a staffing and career assistant. Because one, it helps you with getting staffed at like mm -hmm. a high paying job in tech. And two, it also is a private assistant for you while you're working. So meaning the AI, let's say you're working at, at a new company mm -hmm. and people, you're going to get a thousand emails. Yeah. And many times people will email you asking you a question and nine times out of ten, you don't know the answer right away. You have to go and like look something up or no, research. Facts, facts. Octoply, it's integrated with your with your email. So when someone emails you asking you a question, the AI is able to instantaneously research the answer and respond back to that email as if it's you and saying, "Hey, here's the answer." Is that like where? Because sometimes you know we get these emails, these automated emails that have that have your name in it automatically, like, "Hey, Wayne." What's up, man? I saw that. Da, 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 da. Is, is that what you're talking about? Like no, that? no, no, no. That's not that. That's uh, that's nothing with AI. That's that's okay. been around for some years. Uh, that's more so. Um, that, that that could be a variety of different things, but many different people use that. You you could get a software that does that. Okay. Where you plug it in, and let's say you have an email list, or even mm -hmm. if it's not an email list, let's say somebody was on your website. Yeah. So people can have bots on their website, and again. Bots are not AI. They're completely different things. But people really, can have bots. Uh, no, it's not. Um, there are some companies that claim to have AI, but really they're just using bots. Bots have been around for a while, and it's not artificial intelligence. Okay. What, what AI is, AI is, so bots do one task. Mm -hmm. That's it. AI is able to not only do a variety of tasks, AI gets smarter over time. Okay. So, for instance, even with Octoply, with Octoply, uh, let's say o Octoply right now can it can uh, it can go on any company's website, not mm -hmm. any company. It can go on about eighty percent of companies' websites, mm -hmm. and it can go through their whole website and apply to a job as if it's you. It can fill everything in, but there are some company websites where they have questions that Octoply is like, I I don't know the what what is this question? Yeah. So the first couple times Octoply might answer it wrong. But over time, Octoply gets smarter. It mm. actually is able to adapt and able to see, okay, I don't think this is the best way to answer this question. Yeah. And so that, those are things that AI can do um, where really they call it machine learning, where machines can learn over time. And the thing that's scary is that even that's in the- That's going to be crazy. That's it's really crazy. It's robot type-ish. So, so the era that we're in right now when it comes to AI, they said that AI right now is in its toddler years. So think think when the iPhone one of the iPhone two f came out versus yeah. the iPhone now. Yeah. AI right now is is like the iPhone one. So by the time it's like the iPhone fourteen, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. Kidnapping us and putting us in the back of a trunk. Man, look, <laughs> hey, look, hey, y'all invest invest in some of this stuff because uh, either way, this stuff gonna be booming. No facts. Are you investing in any tech stocks? Yes, I am. 
Okay. I would, I, cause yeah, I, yeah. I'm not sure because I'm like, okay, you said you're not techie techie, but I'm like, okay, did you educate yourself on the actual tech world to invest in? Oh, I'm a, I'm a huge business nerd. Okay. So I'm, right. I'm, okay. I'm obsessed. Like, if you, if you look at my YouTube, my YouTube algorithm, all mm-hmm. you will see is business news, tech news, what's happening with all of these companies. Okay. So, even though I'm not techie in terms of, like, knowing how to build everything myself, yeah. I understand most of it. Okay. And I know what all of these companies are doing. I keep up with all of these companies because okay. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm a huge business nerd. So, yeah, I'm definitely invested um, in them. Okay. Uh, but, but just like Warren Buffett, like Warren Buffett or many other successful investors, they don't mm-hmm. invest in anything they don't understand. No fact. So I invest in what I understand and, of course, what I see as having longevity in the world. Okay, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Are there any good, like, tech communities to get into? Oh, yeah, like definitely. Like networking events, things of that nature? Oh, man, yeah, there's a, a lot of uh, great communities. Um, So, uh, so one, uh, the Texas New Black, we have a, we have a community community. Uh, where of course we we answer questions, we assist people, and also mm-hmm. we have a uh, completely free, uh, completely free um, uh, newsletter where every single week we send out a list of different tech events that are happening. Okay. Uh, but outside of that, um, uh, a homeboy of mine uh, by the name of uh, Jared, he's the founder of Big Tech Energy Podcast. Shouts out to um, Jared. Uh, he has a really dedicated community. He's been in the tech industry for about fifteen years, and okay. he's very well connected. Uh, he has a phenomenal uh, community. But then when we talk about tech events, um, so one, I guess I can announce this because by the time this episode drops, we'll probably have our promo out. So one, we are about to have a tech event on a mega yacht. Uh, the Texas, Texas New Black is. Uh, so that's going to be happening in September of this year. That's going to be okay. major. That's good. Major. Right. We're very excited about that. But outside of us in Tech is the New Blacks events, yeah. uh, there are a list of others, whether we're talking black men in tech mm-hmm. or Render ATL. I was just hosting at Render ATL. Shouts out to Render. There's also Afrotech, which is people kind of call it the Super Bowl yeah, of, of tech events. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so there there are, uh, I mean, I'm going to be in Dallas next month for Cyber Hero Con. I'm going to be one of the um, the speakers uh, there at that tech conference. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, there are, man, there are at least somewhere around like 60, 70 large tech conferences that happen every year in the U.S. Okay, it's, so it's, it's a good space to get into if oh, you're not familiar. Yeah, the community, the the, okay. and the community is beautiful. It's Because, I mean... When you when you got a bunch of people making six figures plus, it's yeah. like everybody happy. Everybody happy. <laughs> I thought I saw you put up a post, right? Well, not thought. I, I know I saw it. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if I'm misquoting or not. You said you don't really experience much racism as you're rich now. Oh, yeah. Explain <sighs> that. That's interesting. Of course, you, you know, you always got to be careful because people get sensitive over that stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I ain't know no O.J. Simpson type of stuff. <laughs> uh, but but that being said, one of the things you you do start to realize when you start making a bit more money, especially when you're making money doing something that uh-huh. is, is ethical. Yeah. So if you're making money, and, and no disrespect, but I mean, if, if, you know, shouts out to my rappers, but if you're a rapper, you know, that doesn't have the best, like, like stigma attached to it. Yeah. Um, and so, but like when you're, when you're making a bunch, when you're making a bunch of money and you know, you're connecting with certain people, you start to realize that people don't care what your skin color is. Like if you got motion, you got motion, Mm -hmm. you know, and more often than not, I see a lot of favoritism that I get because I'm black. So when I, even the building that I live in, the building that I live in, in Miami, Mm -hmm. it's not a cheap building. And so it's like you have to be making money to stay yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And so when my neighbors, when they saw me, because there are not a lot of black people there, when they, they saw me, they go out of their way to talk to me because okay. they're, like, curious, like, what does this young black dude do that he can stay here? Yeah. So they'll go out of their way to want to get to know me and see mm-hmm. what I do, and they want to connect, they want to network, they invite me to things. So you see more often than not when, and, and again, I'm speaking generally, but when people are doing really well, you reach a certain point where the only reason you want to make more money is just because just to play the game. Okay. So it's like, of course, like most people are in survival mode and then you get to a certain point where there's like a certain kind of bracket to where like you're semi comfortable, but not really sure if you're okay. Mm -hmm. And then when you kind of push past that threshold and that threshold is kind of different for most people, for some people that threshold might be 200,000 for some people, half a million for some people, 10 million. Yeah. But once you're at a place to where you're like, okay, now I'm just making money just for the game of it. Okay. Just to keep score. 
it's like you'll notice that people that you're connecting with when when they got stuff going on, it com- it becomes people are way more collaborative. Okay. People are way more really? like, yo, let's collaborate. Like, I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care what your gender is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I respect you for what you've accomplished. Yeah. And right. that's what it becomes. It becomes them respecting you for your accomplishment, not them prejudging you because mm. of your gender or skin color or okay. any of any of those things. Okay. So that's something that I've noticed that's not it's not it it's, ain't like that. It, up it's there. not like that. Like you I heard get a up the high rise. I heard a quote recently, and I don't know how accurate this is, but uh-huh. I, I I heard a quote recently where it's like, "Yo, racism," and it's, it's gonna sound wild. Uh huh. And I'm not saying I fully agree with this, but it's something I'm wrestling with. But they're like, "Yo, racism is for poor folk," where really? it's like, it's for, and not saying racism doesn't exist at all levels, but it's like, again, there's not a lot of healthy collaboration. Because people typically are stepping on each other so they can get up there. Okay. The crab in a bucket kind of mentality. Yeah, but when you're out of the bucket, it's like, okay, we're no longer trying to step on each other to get up. Mm-hmm. It's more like, yo, we're all having fun now. We're happy because of what we've done. We made it out of the bucket. Yeah. Now, like, yo, let's help other people get out of the bucket. Uh-huh. So let's collaborate. Whether yeah. you're you're whether you're another brother or you a white person, yo, let's collaborate. Let's come together. So that way we can help more people. Cause now, shoot, now we can help people. And now it makes our businesses look be- look better. It makes yeah. our brands look better. Yeah. So more often than not, man, a lot of the rooms that that I've been privileged to be in, I see a lot of people making money that are not black at all, and they're going out of their way behind the scenes to do a lot of things, whether it's for the black community or other communities. Because at that point, they realize the value of giving back, mm-hmm. and whether it's a tax write off or whether it's something that gives them better uh, positive brand recognition for their business, mm-hmm. and or if they just genuinely are compassionate towards people, okay. you just notice that a lot of the 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 issues and things that happen don't happen as frequently or as or as often when you make it to a certain level. Yeah. Yo, for everybody who is listening and you're thinking that you're interested in a career in tech sales, I suggest you check out Course Careers. Course Careers is a tech boot camp that you can do it entirely from home. It's entirely virtual and it's self-paced. So that means you can knock it out in as early as two weeks or even take a few months if you need to. Now, the really cool thing about Course Careers is that they're actually partnered with multiple tech companies that are hiring their students right after finishing the program. The great thing about Course Careers is that with those partnerships, they're able to guarantee you jobs with some of their partner companies. Now, beyond that alone, the other cool thing we want to tell you about them is that Course Careers is actually only $500. That's it, nothing more, nothing less. But since we've partnered with Course Careers, they're offering our audience a discount of $50 off that already low price. So make sure you use our discount link that we have below so that way you can take advantage of that $50 off that already low price. Do Course Careers at your own pace and let us know what job you end up getting from it. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's why my my biggest thing is uh, it's just been helping people just make more money. And it's like, even if it's not tech, like maybe it's something else, but it's just cut out the BS stuff. There's, there's a lot of BS that's happening right now. Like a lot of people. You mean in the world? I mean, in terms of in terms of careers and in terms okay. of people okay. chasing things. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the problems are that, because even when I talk about how much money I make in tech, mm-hmm. I try to be very clear. I'm even abnormal. Like for me to make the amount of money that I make as fast as I made it mm-hmm. is not normal. And I'm not at all selling a pipe dream where it's like, oh, you can do this too. Yeah, yeah. yeah a few of y'all can, but not everybody. And you some people would do better than me. Who yeah, knows? Yeah, yeah. But I know that I'm not the norm. And I think one of the things that's that's ailing our community today is people wanting to be like everyone wants to be like that, that number one at the very top. So more often than not, people see these pipe dreams mm. whether we're talking you know the the mlm stuff you know i, I yeah, try to be yeah. careful to not say forex because forex is legit but the whole mlm thing that happened where yeah the top Not scamming going, yeah yeah the top two percent of people that were doing that yeah they were making money but yeah. it wasn't something to where the other 98 percent were gonna make money no, you know facts. or even you know i'm a huge believer in in being an entrepreneur and being a business owner yeah nevertheless the Overwhelming majority, 90% of entrepreneurs, like, like fail or don't go anywhere. And I'm not saying don't start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then even beyond that, if you look up the average amount that an entrepreneur makes, the average entrepreneur makes between fifty and 70000 So when you look at that and you realize 
dang. And, of course, everybody wants to say, well, I'm not going to be average. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, the odds are not in your favor. The odds are in your favor to be average. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's why I try to direct people towards industries that, yo, even if you're average, you're going to make a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's what the tech industry is. The average person in tech makes $100,000. And so my biggest thing is, yo, it's good to have a solid income, mm -hmm. you know, and then take that income and pour that into your business or pour that into the stock market or into real estate. Yeah. So that way, worst case scenario, no facts. if you make bad investments, worst case scenario, if your business f flops in five years, mm -hmm. you're still making six figures. Yeah. Even if you quit working in tech and you, you focus on your business full time, if you have to go back to, to tech, you're going back to six figures. Exactly. So, yeah. and I think that's one of the things that messes us up is that we get so caught up on chasing the big fish and we, we, we downplay the, Oh, I don't want to, I don't want a job. I don't want to work for the man for $140,000, $200,000. Yeah. Are you crazy? No, but sometimes you have to do that. Like I talk to a lot of artists, right? And I hear that same thing. Oh, I ain't never working for the man. But sometimes you have to. It's not like working for the man because you can gain skills while you're working there. But also, you're not broke. Because when I say, yo, what's your budget? Uh, nah, bro, like, damn, a budget? Yeah, exactly. If you was making some money, yeah. then you'd be able to invest in some branding. You'd be able to invest in some ads or look good when you're coming on the scene. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I look at it different, you know? I also think there's a, there's a lack of humility because yeah. let's be real, like, when you have a mentality, oh, I don't want to work for nobody, mm -hmm. even when you're a business owner, you work for someone. You're exactly. working for your customers. Yeah. If anything, it's harder working for customers because customers could be rude to you. Exactly. Your boss technically can't be rude to you. If you're at a decent company, your boss yeah. still has to, your, your boss might have an attitude, but they still have to bite their tongue. But when you're a business owner, your customers ain't got to bite no tongue. Your yeah. customers can cuss you out, be disrespectful, all exactly. of that. So when people have this notion of, oh, I don't want to work for somebody, really that's a sign like, yo, you lack humility. Like you lack humility and you lack the respect of looking up to an authority. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, it's like, yo, it's better for you to learn how to be successful working for someone mm -hmm. before you're able to go out there and, and actually do like your own thing and be able to like – really kill it successfully because now like how are you going to be good at being a business owner if you weren't humble enough to work for someone because now when you're a business owner you're not even going to understand what your employee has to deal with exactly you know because your employee yeah. like you're not going to have grace for them when they're late to work because you're you're not going to really be able to understand that yeah, yeah. you're not going to be able to understand how hard their job is there's certain things you're not going to be able to understand more often than not. And so I'm not, I'm not saying that everyone needs to get a nine to five. No, I'm not no, saying that course. at all. Yeah. I'm just saying this notion where we're so arrogant or our, our noses is, is so up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like the thing that's sad is like you look at who the number one, like which community or which groups are the number one that are chasing entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. It's the black community. Yeah. But the black community is still the brokes community. So that should show you something. But it's like what communities are chasing jobs the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the richest, the wealthiest communities, the Indians and, and the whites and the Asians. Yeah. They are less entrepreneurial than we are. Nevertheless, they make more money because they, they get high paying nine to fives. Mm -hmm. And then they leverage that money and put it into real estate, the stock market, or into their own business. But now because when you're making $200,000 a year, mm -hmm. now... You can live off a hundred thousand and use the other hundred thousand to pour into your business. You're your own investor. No facts. And so that's that's why people ask me like, "Yo, Cyrus, how did tech as a new black take off so fast? Like, how this, how that?" I'm like, because I was making good money Cause working you had in the tech. Bread to put I into took it, yeah. the money and I kept. Pump, I hired my videographer. I'm not gonna say like on here how much my video, I, I pay my videographer. Yeah. <laughs> I pay my videographer a lot of money. Like yeah. my videographer just doing my podcast, he makes six figures a year. So wow, okay. like that, and I have a whole team. I have an entire team. Yeah. All of them are getting paid. When I hired him on, he started at seventy five hundred a month. Is how much I was paying him every every recording, every shoot. I was able to oh, do every that recording. You pay him seven thousand. Yeah, but yeah, but we we would do it would be once a month. So we would record oh, eight okay, guests. Okay, okay. So it would be for okay. eight guests. Okay, and it would be so basically okay. it would be the equivalent of eight episodes. But we would record all that in one day. But it'll be a full day of shooting, and of course okay. he'll be making edits all month. So okay, it wasn't like right. just something real quick. It definitely, definitely worked. Yeah, yeah, Nevertheless, yeah. how was I able to pay that? Because I was making $230,000 
like working my job in tech. That man was making them bad. So and now, okay. now the podcast grosses over a million dollars a year. Like we're, we're on track. The podcast is on track to do a little over one point five a mil this year. What? Yo, we gotta cut that off. And everything has been bootstrapped. We yeah, had no, yeah, yeah. we had no investors. We we had no nothing. And so we're okay. growing and we're scaling. And how are we able to do that? Because I, I. I sat down. I said, yo, bump all this, me chasing the flashing lights. Yeah. Let me get a high-paying career. And then after, okay, start so helping other sacrificed. people get in the industry. Yeah, I did. I said, yo, I, I sacrificed the whole me being on stages. And now the irony, the thing that's funny is that because I, and, and man, like, like the Bible talks about this. It talks about like, mm-hmm. y- like yo, like you walking with a certain level of humility mm-hmm. and how like God will elevate you. And the thing is, the uh, issue that I had, I used my, my handle on social media used to be Cyrus Speaks, and because I was speaking at a lot of events, yeah. even though I was broke, I had such this weird arrogance about myself because mm-hmm. I was always at events and er- people would stop me and be like, yeah. "Oh my God, I'm a fan of yours," and it's like, man, I went so broke when all the speaking engagement stuff stopped. I had to get this like little, like this goofy job where I was at Walmart. It was like this weird type of job. I don't even want to get into it, but <laughs> okay. I remember pe- like a few people coming up to me at the Walmart. Yeah. And them seeing me and them being like, yo, you're Cyrus Speaks. That's and they would look and be like, what are you doing here? You work here? Because you were stunting on the ground. Man, when I tell you I needed that humility. Yeah. Because eventually I got to a point where I was proudly saying, yeah, yeah this is where I work at. This is my job. I'm like, yo, I'm not speaking no more because X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. But that level of humility, it brought me to the point of being like, okay, I need to get a solid career. Bump looking popping on social media. Yeah, facts. I just need a solid career. That I can provide for my family and I can stop being a little boy, stop being Peter Pan. I can grow up and do what mm-hmm. I need to do. Yeah. And then the beauty of it is that that humility in doing that ended up translating to where God elevated me. And now I'm back speaking on stages, but now I'm on stages not talking about watch me perform on stage and do these cool this cool poetry with these bars and wordplay. So you're not going back to that? No, 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 no. I thought no, that no, was no. your passion that I, I thought I read that. Ah. Or did I did I not? A uh, passion. I enjoy doing it. Okay. I, I definitely enjoy doing it. But so you evolved from that. Yeah, I because ev- now I, I don't think, for me personally, there's nothing that makes me feel better. Like, and I'm gonna be straight up with you. Someone can hand me a check for ten million dollars right now. Mm. It would not make me happier. It would not change my emotion. Mm. And I've realized that. I'm like, okay, I now make enough, and that's and I would gladly take it. But I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be up all night all excited, like staying up like, oh, what am I gonna do with this 10 million? I would literally yeah. look at the 10 million check, put it in the bank, and I would talk and brainstorm with my team, brainstorm with our finance manager, and be like, okay, what should we invest? Like what sh- what should we put it into? Should we put okay, how much should we put into the marketing for the podcast? Mm-hmm. How much should we hire a couple more people? I would just look at how to spread the 10 million into things that are gonna continue to grow what I'm doing. I wouldn't okay. change anything up. Okay. But the thing that brings me joy right now is seeing is getting messages of people getting into the tech industry and people okay. messaging me saying, yo, this changed my life. I was doing this. Like that's the thing that, that makes my eyes tear up okay. is, is seeing other people. Cause once you're winning, that, you want to see uh, other people. Win man, well. when you're genuinely winning. Yeah. And again, when you realize it, okay, winning more is just, again, it's just a game at this point, making more money is just kind of a way to kind of play around and be like, Oh, could I get to a hundred million? Yeah. Let's find out. But even if I don't, I'm okay. But what I'm not okay about is not helping other people get to the bag as no, well. Facts. And so that's really what it's all about. So now when I'm at events, I'm on stages, I'm on podcasts, I'm like, yo, I'm going to talk about this stuff. Hey, there are a lot of things I enjoy talking about. Mm-hmm. I enjoy relationship conversations. I enjoy theology conversations. I'm into all of those things. But at the end of the day, I realize, okay, what am I able to, to, to talk about that's going to help people right now? Correct. And I'm like, I, feel you. I don't think it's relationships. Yeah, that's all that's subjective. It's like I love, I love God, I love Jesus, I love talking about that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, gonna talk about that. But mm-hmm. the thing that I know that I'm able to help people with right now is being able to either get in the tech industry or just make more money in general. And that's nice. what I love seeing people win more. Yeah, and y'all need more money. Stop trying to front. Oh yeah, man, this has been good, brother. You know what I'm saying? Thanks, man. You, you dropped a whole lot of jewels today. You know what I mean? Yeah, appreciate that, man. No, no, of course, man. So let everybody know where they can find you at. Yeah, definitely. So y'all can find me typically everywhere. So if it's uh for Tech is a New Black, uh, you can um find us on all major podcast platforms or audio platforms as well as YouTube. 
Uh, for myself personally, you can. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook. I'm everywhere except for Twitter, and my team is about to start posting me more on TikTok. But the p- yeah, platforms TikTok that pop. I'm on, I'm on is Instagram. Like Instagram okay. is where I'm heavily at, as well as LinkedIn, because the tech community is is it's booming, on booming on LinkedIn. Okay. You want to talk about getting a bag, man? Look, you better <laughs> be on. Where is that? People I just created know. a LinkedIn like probably like a month ago. Yeah, yeah. Link, link, LinkedIn is popping. People, people don't realize it because I mean. Yeah, link, LinkedIn's popping. You you can get a bag on there. You get a real nice bag. Man, you heard what he said, man. Yo, and I tell people that all the time. You got to spread your stuff out on different social media platforms because you don't know which one you are gonna pop on. Yeah, you yeah, know you, what I mean? yeah. You really don't work differently on all of them. Yeah, no, I- exactly. And I mean, and I want to be clear. I I don't have the bandwidth to be on each of the platforms myself. Yeah. But again, I took my tech bag and I I um you know hired a few VAs. So my VAs yes, are yes. everywhere. They're okay. in all of my DMs, you know. So it's either me or my VAs in the DMs, and my VAs okay. are, like, always working. So so it ain't going down in the DM. Uh, No, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. It, it, it's, it's funny because my VAs, what I do on Instagram, whenever there are people that I know personally mm-hmm. or if somebody sends me a personal message, uh, my VAs shift them to a private, like, message thing uh, and, like, flag okay. it. Okay. And so I'll usually do that. If I know someone and, and we connect, I automatically flag their their um their account. Mm-hmm. So that way, if they ever message me, my VAs, like, know not to open up those messages. But okay, it, okay. it is always funny whenever uh women, like, something happens or yeah. a woman might say something slick. And I and I see my VAs open up the message. I'm yeah. like, oh, that's really funny. Especially when I, like, of course, I turn if I turn the person down, my VAs will, like, message me, like, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Man, yeah. this was good, brother, man. You know, you dropped some knowledge out here, and, and, and the people need it out here, man. Hey, man, I'm, I'm happy to do it.